So first of all, let's uh, get right down into it. You know, what if you were in a situation where you're now finding out that, you know, there's this plot, maybe a plot to buy the galaxy. But at the same time, we got opposition from the extraterrestrials who don't want us off the planet. But then there is a plan to get off the planet and like on the moon, maybe on Mars. Uh, and then at the same time, but what if this thing has been around for quite some time now to start explaining space travel, what is happening? And so we're going to go over a few things today. Uh, instead, you know, not to see what we see on TV and how they're flying the space and all the things that they're doing. But as you know, with why the big secret, your eyes are useless when your mind is blind. We're going to think why, and we're going to also uh, think about why the how is never as important as the why. Why Why are we doing all that? Why are they doing space? Okay, yeah, we got this thing to public that we want to, uh, you know, be the first man on the moon, but maybe there was some, a bigger plot at play from here, right? Uh, but at the same time, then there's people that saying, no, we're going to fight against this. And so now it kind of explains why the extraterrestrials may not want us off this earth. And at the same time, while we're trying to get off the earth and why you should be focusing, why your kids and everyone else should be getting off this planet at some point. And the question is, who owns the moon and can the moon be owned uh, and everything else? And, and you probably would never wrap your head around that uh, to say that. So we're going to go over some of these things tonight real quick. But then at the same time, we're going to do what I think we should do best, which is what you see our power where what we're here for is to question the narrative we have to so if you don't question the narrative or what i call the question uh, then it doesn't take you anywhere so let's get right into what i'm talking about i was looking over some documents and one of these things were talking about there this is coming from the space i think settlement institute but there's this thing already that they have already put these contractor clause together long before we've been talking about this on why the big secret not this but typically these conversations and probably in some cases some of you watching maybe before you were born but there's already a plan to what they're going to do why like who owns space uh now we already know that the extraterrestrial saying that that's their layer this is where they come from earth is uh, it's you know a project planet we need to stay here but obviously now our ambition is mankind and humans are saying let's get off this planet but then they're like well, then if somebody gets off the planet and they go over to Mars, you know, who owns that? OK, so that's something that we 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 got to think about. But there is a plan. There is a plan. So let me get started to put what they're calling this right now. Um, this 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 act is called the um, Space Homestead Act. OK, and it's an act to promote privately financed space settlements. Now. Listen to that first line right there to kind of let you know why you now probably see the greatness of Elon Musk and Amazon and uh, Galactic, the guy, all everybody's trying to get to space because they're operating on something totally different than what we're operating on. And we're sitting here thinking that they're talking about, you know, uh, you know, just trying to get to Mars because humans need to know what's there. And that is not it. It is a bigger plot. The other definitions of this act is the fact that space settlement is a permanently occupied. So, all right, let me get back to it. So it's the, it's the space homestead act. And what they're saying is whoever get there will at this point own the, the place, right? So listen to me, what is one thing that we don't have anymore? They tell you, they're not making any more land here in, in the world, right? You can't, you can't make any more land therefore everybody continues to buy it and buy it and buy it but now that we're going out to space the moon mars all of these places asteroids it's a whole different a ball game when it comes down to this so the space homestead act says the definition of space settlement is a permanently occupied facility base or city situated at a pacific geographic location on an extraterrestrial body such as the moon, Mars, or an asteroid. So they already got this definition in this act that's been operating behind the scenes, okay? Then they saying private entity, okay? So we're gonna go over all this and then we'll come back and question this narrative. But they said a private uh, space company is what they're saying, a consortium of private space companies 
and or a one or more individuals that are not controlled by any sovereign state or government. This is what they consider a private entity. So space settlement and entities will be used later on in this whole thing. Um, examples of a state control of space company include, but are not limited to government, government agency, or another government control company owning or controlling an affected majority of voting shares or having the ability to select the board of directors or executives, merely being subject to normal government regulations, however, does not make a private space company government control. So basically what they're saying real quickly in this act that's sitting around that you didn't know, I didn't really know about, is that they're already saying the government can't own Mars. They can't do it. And that means that explains to you that there is a power above our governments and they already put it in place that you're not going to own Mars. However, they can, you know, encourage private entities to go to Mars or to Moon because then if they do, then of course they've got their hands in a cookie jar. So they're saying that the findings that Congress find, you hear me? That number one, expansion of human habitat beyond Earth through the establishment of a permanent lunar settlement, a space airline, enabling ordinary people to travel there is a normal custodian continuing of the human uh, drive to expand into the unknown territory and will be of insanable value for America in all mankind. So Congress is saying if a private company goes out there and establish a settlement, basically, I'll get into it real quick, that they're still going to have jurisdiction over this and therefore that settlement is going to pay taxes all the way back to Earth to the United States. Okay? So but we already know that you got the rich people, Rockefellers and all these people running the government. The IRS is a private and owned entity. So could these people control be so vast that they're saying that get people out there, own it, but pass rules that saying just because you made it to Mars, you get it, it's yours, but you're gonna pay taxes back here for the land and then the landlord itself, okay? So also they saying number two, privately finance space exploration and settlement is preferable to the taxpayer which is you and us finance, taxpayer financing because the government needs to limit its own expenditure so what they're saying is they don't want the taxpayers to pay for the trip to mars and to colonize mars why not why because supposedly we the people then we will own it then you can't control us if we own and our taxpayer money is paying for the trip to mars and the colonization part right they already got this plan i'm telling y'all that the plan is there also it says space exploration number three and settlement with private financing produce a new tax revenue for the united states space exploration and settlement so when you get off the planet and go to mars and get your house on mars you're still gonna pay taxes the system is on point right so let's get into this, but I'm going to give you some outs in a minute. A new addition incentive is needed because the potential short-term profit sources are currently much too small to attract billions of dollars of private capital necessary. So now the government is saying we need to incentivize those companies, give them tax incentives. We need to give them a way to get off this planet to get more property so that we can make more money and hence pay the people who are running the country who are not government, right? It also says the potential value of the land on the moon. They, this is written out. The potential value of land on the moons, Mars, and an asteroid can provide an additional economic incentive, incentive for privately funded space settlement at no cost to the government. The government saying, uh, and we'll come back to that. Like I said, we're going to question the narrative. There is currently no international law of private land ownership in space because most majority nations have deliberately refused to ratify the agreement governing the activities of states on the moon and other celestial bodies that was put in place in 1979 here on called the Moon Treaty. The U.S. The US Senate refuses to ratify means that the Moon Treaty provisions are not the law of the land and in U.S. courts and therefore do not inhibit the action of a U.S. citizen or legislator. Okay? 
it's getting deep, right? More importantly, the framers of the Moon Treaty found it necessary to attempt to write a rule forbidding private ownership of the land of the moon, clearly confirming that such objective had not already been accomplished by the Treaty of Principles of Governing the Activities of State in the exploration of the use of outer space, which is this, including the moon and celestial bodies, okay, in 1967, known as the Outer Space Treaty, nor by the UN Resolution GARS 1962. All right, so I'm, you know, 25 plus, no, I'm 25 times two plus three. So you'll figure that out. And one of the things that you have to look at is this stuff has been in place long before we got here, truth seekers, right? Do you know there's private stuff? They're already sending people to the moon and asking people to go there to colonize. And we thinking we're doing it. They get ready to go control the Mars and all of this stuff. Asteroid that'll make you trillionaires. All right, so the other part of this, if the requirement of the law continues to be met, all rights, privileges, and responsibilities shall be immediately transferred by the sale, lease, or appropriate means to any other private entity. They keep using entities, all right? You know, private companies and all of that. The U.S. pledges to defend the recognized extraterrestrial properties by imposing appropriate sanctions against aggressors, whether it's public or private, if it pledges never to allow the sale of a U.S. citizen, they have to change this ordinance so that we don't get off this planet and slavery is legal somewhere else off the planet. It's earth laws, right? But if you get off the planet, you can be a slave and there's no laws. There's no laws, right? This is real. It said, so at this point, they're saying that uh, it pledges to never allow the sale to U.S. citizen or any extraterrestrial land. Okay, so anyway, let me bag up on it. Okay, so it said the U.S. pledges to defend and recognize extraterrestrial properties by imposing appropriate sanctions against aggressors, whether they're public or private. It pledges never to allow the sale to U.S. citizens or any extraterrestrial land which was seized by aggression. Okay, but it makes no pledge of military defense or recognize extraterrestrial properties. <laughs> if after 10 years, these limits proved to have been insufficient to get privately funded settlement efforts started, Congress or some national or international authority in this delegate shall consider whether the maximum size of the claims should be enlarged, right? To give them a little more incentive. So it's saying the claimant must commit to consistency to make good faith efforts to promptly offer or arrange or for safe and reliable transportation to and from the settlement to all re regardless of nationality who are willing to pay a fare to cover expenses and reasonable profit. The other part of this is just having the desire to do this. And I'm just so happy to be where we are and what attracted him. And if I told a story is that we're Project Black and and, and what we're trying to make the discovery. And y'all remember Samuel Chung, y'all remember that story? We did an interview on, um, I think we did one on forbidden knowledge and I made a post some of it here. Remember he talks about that the first people on the planet was at some point yellow and black people. And he mentioned where they came from. So I called him yesterday and I was like, Hey, I'm going to talk to you about project black and still he's like, yeah, I'm a part of it. Let's go. But now it's been another dynamic added component. You know, Dr. Haynes is going to give us access to trademarks and talent and be on the board and we're going to build a craft to go find that planet. Now, along the way, you stop on asteroids, different places. And what if we colonize those things on the way? So this is real. And some of you might be like, okay, Roger, it's crazy, but no, it's real. It's real. Uh, but I'm sure you're talking about being excited, being part of that, being the institution or the entity that colonized. And now you got a place where we, you know, people and everything else. So we probably miss out on opportunity to talking about imaginable wealth. I didn't get it when. You know, Dr. Haynes, like, you know, do you know what a trillionaire and all that stuff could be laid on down the road for your families? Okay, legacy, talking 15, 20 years, 30 years, I, you know, hope to be here. But either way, 
thinking so big to then get into the game from flying cars to eventually space line travel, which he has a certification for. Where he's working on a yeah for the cargo, but then they don't there's no written one for passengers yet. So you mark your, my words right now, 15 years from now, there's gonna be people selling property on Mars from Earth. We've seen it in a movie. You can buy property on Mars. Look at this. And we see it in the movies and we think it's a joke, but that's a reality. That they're gonna be selling passenger tickets for you to get off the planet. Now, there's another people say get off the planet because of essential level events. That's cool. But still, if we all had to get off this planet and go somewhere and land, somebody else is owning everything. 